Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Today I'm actually talking about a film that you can stream exclusively right now on Amazon Prime Video. Um, it is a film with Sylvester Stallone called Samaritan. I believe at one point this film was supposed to be released theatrically, but the pandemic and all that kind of stuff kind of stalled this movie and unfortunately kind of never really gave it a theatrical release. Uh, but MGM and Amazon Studios decided to release it to their streaming service, Amazon Prime Video. Uh, so I have a friend of mine that has the streaming service. I personally do not. Uh, but him and I got together. He owns the streaming, or he, he has a subscription to the streaming service, and so him and I were able to watch it. Uh, so that's why this video is as out as late as it is, because I think this film released in, like, August 26th or so. So that's why it took me as long as it did to finally get around to seeing it. But in this film, you guys, this film is a um, kind of a character study in a way. It's It's also a superhero film, but basically what it's about is this guy who's played by Sylvester Stallone, um, he used to be the superhero of this bad neighborhood, and um, him and his twin brother were kind of these super-powered beings. One of them became evil, he, one of them became good. And so basically there's this bad fight that happened between the two of them one day. Uh, one of them had some type of a fire hammer and took one of, one of them out, and now one of them's still alive, the other, while the other one is not. And so basically this guy known as Samaritan basically lives in this neighborhood still, but he's kind of under the cover he you know he's trying to be this normal person I, I even want to say his name is probably something that's not his real name I think he goes by something simple like John Smith or something that's probably not his real name and so basically this kid who lives next door to him is kind of fascinated with this whole Samaritan myth that happened many years ago um there he really is kind of the only superhero that's ever existed in this world and so basically this kid gets kind of obsessed with him follows him around kind of tests him in a way both intentionally and unintentionally to see if he really is the Samaritan guy or not and so basically over the course of this film there is something kind of offbeat about this guy that really does kind of suggest that he is the Samaritan guy that went missing all those years ago and over the course of this film there is kind of this new villain that uprises within the neighborhood that really does kind of need a hero to stop him so basically Samaritan and this kid have to come up with a plan to basically stop this evil criminal guy once and for all that's kind of doing all this destruction within the neighborhood. So overall, guys, I thought this film was okay. Um, I will say right off the bat, I can kind of see why um, Amazon and MGM kind of decided to just put this film on streaming and not do it theatrically. First off, I think this is a very difficult film to market. Um, I thought the trailer was actually pretty good for this movie, so that part of me is still a little... There is a part of me, it's like, well, the trailer was so well made, I, I have a hard time believing somebody would not want to be interested in seeing this movie but the other side of me is, is now that I've seen the film in completion um, I can kind of see why uh, MGM and Amazon kind of pulled the plug on this movie as far as putting it in theaters go there really is a lot of issues with this film uh, I would even say there's a lot of issues regarding like keeping people in the seats for this movie and I'll go over that with my negatives but for the most part like I said there is good things about this movie I didn't hate it I didn't think it was a heaping pile of garbage or anything but there is a lot of problems with this film that I think that is going to prevent a lot of people from enjoying this film. I don't think we'll ever get a sequel to this movie, even though the ending of the film kind of does suggest a sequel in a way. Um, but let's go over some positives and negatives, some things that I enjoyed about Samaritan, but at the end of the day, it's not the greatest movie either. So, uh, oh, and by the way, I'm wearing one of my Sylvester Stallone shirts. This is a Rocky Balboa shirt. So for those of you who haven't caught that yet, that, that's what I'm wearing right now. But for my positive and negatives of this movie, um, I do like the idea of a world where superheroes once existed. I do like the idea of there was a, a time where maybe two heroes were around or one hero, one supervillain. Uh, happened once, never happened again. Uh, people who miss that person clearly are doing a lot of studies and research as to where this person might have gone. Uh, but I do like the idea of they once existed, they're not around anymore. There is potential that one of them might still be around. But the idea of heroes protecting the world all the time, once and for all, that era has now finished. And I like the idea of a world where we kind of get to see what happens when the heroes go away. And yet one of them is still kind of around. And if they do come back, you know, what would happen if they came back and things like that. So I do like that concept that the film plays around with. So more than anything, I like the setup of this movie, even if it's not executed to the best of its potential. I also like the idea of to always do the right thing, um, and it's it's a definitely a message that I can't talk too much about because it's something I explored a lot in the third act. But for the most part, there is a lot of scenes where 
um, characters, even the evil characters, the characters that are supposed to be interpreted as villains, definitely had that line of there's it's always the right thing to do the right thing, to always follow the right thing, to always be a good person, to always have good in your heart. Um, and I do like that message. It's to always do the right thing, even if you're evil, even if you're good, um, even if you do something that you might regret for the rest of your life. I do like the idea of even the people who are the worst in society have the potential to turn their lives around to become good again. So I do like this idea of to always do the right thing, even if you're in this really bad situation. A lot of people interpret you as a bad person. There always is that idea that you can always come back and do the right thing and redeem yourself among society. And I do like Sylvester Stallone's character overall. It's a very deep character. Definitely a character that doesn't like to talk to people very much. He definitely calls people names when he doesn't want to be followed around or have too many questions thrown at him. You do like I do like the idea, too, of this guy that wants to fit in with everybody. Maybe he might cheat every once in a while with his super strength and push something a little bit farther away than when it kind of is in his way and being able to cheat a little bit with his superpowers while still trying to fit in with everybody. So I do like this idea of this character that is trying to fit in with everybody else, even if he has a dark past and has a past regarding him being this former superhero. And I do like the chemistry between Sylvester Stallone and this kid. I think this kid's name is Javin Walton in real life. Um, I do think they have good screen chemistry, so I do think that when the two of them are on screen together, they do have great screen chemistry and bring out both the action, the humor, and the drama in a very effective way. And overall, there is some neat comic book effects. I even told the friend who I was watching this with, this is kind of feels like if you ask Zack Snyder to direct a Purge movie, this is kind of what it would feel like. Because there is a lot of scenes where it does kind of feel like Purge anarchy, but there is also a lot of scenes that are intentionally kind of comic booky. They use a lot of filters, a lot of effects to kind of make it look like it's something that's from a comic book. So there is some occasional moments like that kind of feel like that, specifically towards the beginning when they're going over Samaritan's history. And for the most part, those comic book effects are pretty neat and pretty effective. But for my negatives, and another reason why I think this film ended up on streaming and not in theaters, is this film is very slow at times. I would even say the first hour of this film, there's just a lot of times where it's just like, okay, let's get moving, let's get, go on, let's go to the next story point, let's go to the next plot point, and it just keeps dragging and dragging and dragging. And it just feels very slow. There's just a lot of scenes where you just kind of want to check your watch, check the time, see how much, much longer of the film you have to go. And it's only about an hour and 40 minutes, so it's not like it's a long movie. But it's very slow. There's a lot of scenes that really do kind of drag, that really feel like they'd be cut out or be brought to the point a little bit sooner than they do. So there is a lot of slow points in this film, unfortunately. There also is just a lot of genre tropes. There's just a lot of scenes where... It's like, okay, so many films have done this already with the mom burning something on the stove or the kid who wants to follow the guy around and he thinks he's this hero or this villain or this character that's in mythology somewhere. There's just a lot of scenes where it's just like, okay, we've kind of done this before in other projects. And so there's just a lot of scenes where rather than Samaritan finding its own voice, it's borrowing from so many other sources that have done this kind of thing so much better at so many different times in history so it's just as a result, it kind of comes off as a genre trope than doing its own thing, which I think Samaritan kind of doesn't exactly benefit from. I also don't like how most of the action in this film is kept for the third act, and that's really too bad. I would say a lot of the trailers and even the genre that this film is placed in is kind of an action movie. And if you keep it all for the third act, that's not, that's not going to get you more fans. I, I just can't see... Anybody walking away from this was like, oh man, I am so happy that all the action of this movie is kept for the very third act of this film and I had to spend the first two acts with no action whatsoever. I just can't see a lot of people being excited about that. Um, and that just goes back to my point of this is a very slow film. I think that could have benefited from possibly more action scenes because by the time you reach that third act, it's, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of action in the third act, but it's a very long wait to get to that action, unfortunately. There's also just a lot of inconsistent superpowers. Uh, there's a scene where Samaritan seems to suggest if he uses his powers for too long, he needs to cool off for a long time. And so there's a scene where you see him eating a bunch of ice cream. And they really only kind of use that once. So I don't know if that was just a joke for one time and they had to set up for that one joke. Or if that really is how his superpowers work because he can only use them for so long before getting too hot that he needs to cool off with a shower or with ice cream or whatever. 
and they only use it once. And so it's just one of those things where I would have a hard time describing to somebody what Samaritan's powers is besides super strength. And I would also have a hard time saying if it's limited or if he can use it as long as he wants or he can, but he has to cool off immediately afterwards. So there's just a lot of inconsistencies like that where something happens and they only use it once and it's only used as a flaw once. So it's kind of hard to describe what exactly this character has and what his, kind of his downs balls are as far as his powers go. Then another thing I didn't like in this film is there's just a lot of plot conveniences. Like there's a scene literally where the villain of the film has this ability to turn all the power off to the city and he only does it once. And so it's hard to say if this is something he gathered over the course of the film or if something got cut out or if he really had this ability all along. <clears throat> But it's very weird. It's not really even him doing it. It's, it's him telling one of his henchmen to do it. So I don't know if they're at a power plant and that's how they got away with it. But it, it's very inconsistent. It's like, okay, well, if he could do that all along, some of his schemes earlier in the film probably could have been easier fulfilled and easier to pursue. So it's just there's just a lot of plot conveniences where it's like the one time where the plot really needs it and it doesn't want to explain how we can do it, they use it. And so it is one of those films where the most outrageous thing can happen exactly when they want it and they have no reason to explain it because they only do it once. So it is unfortunately one of those kind of movies. But overall, I'm going to give Samaritan a 7.5 out of 10. I think it's an okay film. I think on streaming, if you already have Amazon Prime Video and just need something to watch on a rainy day, it's not the worst film you could watch. But uh, there's, you know, there's good things about it, but there's a lot of bad things about it too. Like I said, I really do think it's a very slow film. And I really don't get why most of the action is kept for Act 3 and why there's so many plot inconveniences and inconsistent superpowers throughout and so many genre tropes. But it's an okay film. If you already have Amazon Prime Video and like superhero films, I think you can get away with watching it. Just go in expecting it's not anything amazing. Uh, but for those who don't have Amazon Prime Video or were kind of hesitant about this movie, you can probably just skip this one overall. But 7.5 out of 10 for me. I don't think it'll end up on physical media because it is on the Amazon streaming service. So I don't think it'll end up at Redbox anytime soon. But 7.5 out of 10, it's okay. Not an amazing film, but not a great film either.